I need to redo this because for some reason, no, what? my awesome, my awesome phone decided to do something less awesome just there. Um, <laughs> I love this. This should be your bloopers. Seriously, I would watch that. <laughs> <laughs> that so should go into the bloopers. Please do bloopers, please. <laughs> yes, at, at the at the end. Hi, and welcome to the NL Sketchnoting Graphic Recording and Visual Thinking Podcast, where we celebrate the lives and work of visual thinkers and allow them to showcase things they are enthusiastic about. Today, I'm talking to Natalia Talkovska. Natalia is founder and owner of Natalka Design. She helps people tell their stories in creative new ways and gives them the tools to turn their communications upside down and make a lasting impact. Those tools include live sketching, sketchnoting, videos, visual facilitation, training, and yes, even in-person consulting. Now that is just her day job. By night, when she's not out dancing semi-professional, she furthers the cause of doodling by running a worldwide network of doodly do's, meetings where people can think they can't draw and then find out that they actually can and meet a bunch of like-minded, awesome people in the process. You'll leave there with friends, not business cards. I'm just dying to talk to her, so let's do just that right now. And first, Natalia, how did you get into your line of work? That was just like a story from a movie a bit because I was doing totally different things. I was working at a school, teaching art, teaching special needs. I was drawing here and there, but never anything proper. And it was a mix of right time, right uh, moment, a bit of uh, luck and a bit of good research, I guess. I uh, bumped into this guy uh, on Twitter who was running different businesses and charities. I was quite upset with my life at that point, And I decided to ask if I can meet him for breakfast just to give me maybe some inspiration or something give me something and uh that was quite a powerful one hour and it made me realize that i can actually do some cool stuff i can actually help some businesses he really loved my work he didn't know exactly as well what i could do what this thing could be but in after week after that i set up my business just in like 20 minutes in a bank uh, i left my job and then I started worrying. And then I just had my first gigs kind of coming up, just joining people, sometimes for free. Sometimes me just asking everyone in my network, hi, guys, I draw. Can I help you understand some stuff during your meetings? So that's kind of how it started without anything being planned or not even a name for it. Because to be honest, I didn't really know how exactly I can call it. Then I started Googling that it's called live sketching, speed drawing, gra- graphic facilitation. But I didn't know exactly how I could, you know, kind of name it then. Um, And from there, you know, we're looking at four years now in the making and uh, still learning so much, but at least I know what I'm doing. So that's a good thing. So you're saying it only took you four years to go from not being really happy with your job to having probably one of the most awesome jobs there is to be doing and being hugely successful at it. Well, that sounds like you know, (laughs) that sounds more amazing when you say it like that. I think this is still such a learning process. And I think there's so many more years still to go to make this even more amazing and more helpful. And I think there's still so much in the visual uh, communication that uh, is not being discovered or people haven't used yet or, you know, so it's still kind of like, I I find it still like a new thing. Yes, now it's, I can call it a running properly agency in London, a small agency, you know, a few people hired, a lot of people joining depending on a project. But I would say that the first year and a half or first two years, that was just me, you know, shooting and just going around London and just talking to people, meeting new people, listening to people, joining things, a lot of free work, trust me, I'm still paying for those days. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, really took a lot of time and energy to kind of, I think, get to where I am right now. It was a lot of this or nothing approach. Mm -hmm. And what is the most important lesson you take from those beginning years? Uh, Never whine about stuff because that won't get you anywhere. So there were moments where I would be like talking to my mentor then and, and a friend oh, no one's replying to me. Oh, I didn't get that job. Oh, he's not really paying me or something. And these moments taught me that that just gets me nowhere. Deal with it. Move on. Seriously, the harder you get, like you approach this, the better. I have a sign on my wall uh, saying get shit done and things like that. I'm sorry for the word if anyone's offended, but actually that helped me always because I've learned that, right, something's not working. 
let's see if I can do it this way. And the more I was approaching it this way, the more positive, the more, well, not everyone's going to work with you. That's fine. The better it was going. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, I think a very important lesson uh, that I uh, unfortunately must admit that I have to keep learning and lessons are uh, generally repeated until finally learned. I talk about lessons in your experience. Who has been the biggest influence on your life and, and what lessons did that person teach you? Mm, that's a big question. I would say it's definitely not one person. It would be a life I just said, well, there's this one person. I think it's just a bunch of people that you meet on your way. Sounds a bit, you know, uh, cliche, but it's really true. From my mom to my friends to random people I bumped into and they maybe weren't uh, as lovable always to what I do and they were quite harsh on things that I could do better and things like that to my mentor I mean uh, clients there's so many people that you just I feel like you're just this one big sponge that can get so much from different people whether that's positive negative Switzerland approach whatever that is you know definitely my mom is such a huge part of me being who I am and my approach and how I see world and You know, even though I was studying languages, English, thank God I was doing that because I couldn't do the job I'm doing. I couldn't speak to you right now. And, you know, so I think everything makes this weird sense when you just kind of let it, you know, kind of flow through you. So anything I can learn from anyone, I'll take it. That's probably also why you're good at the job that you're currently doing, because that's sort of the whole point of graphic recording, right? You listen to other people. And then you translate their thoughts, their ideas, what they're saying to paper. Now, how do graphic recording and visual thinking, in your opinion, help people? You know what? The, there's, there's so many things you can list. There's books about it, good books, and I'm sure we all know them and you can list them. I'm sure you have a, more even than I do. But uh, main things I see why this thing is working and why we have work coming back is that just it helps people to get it. It helps people to understand quite difficult ideas sometimes. And I see that for us, working with companies that have uh, teams in India, teams in Australia, teams in the US, if someone's not in that room with them on that day, it's really refreshing, nice and uh, simple for them to just get a rich picture in front of their face that we can run through uh, what has been discussed for last two days or something like that. And you see that people just I get it quicker and easier. And also I find that especially when we create values for companies or strategy, where do they get from A to B in let's say 2020 or something, it just gets them more excited as well to just see it as a sort of a understood, united visual that every can kind everyone can just uh, agree with, respond to and see the same thing kind of going forward. So I think that really unites the teams. And how do people generally respond to you when you're up there drawing? In the beginning, it was like, what is she doing there? Who is that young white girl? You know, so that was a bit of that because, you know, uh, I still struggle with people asking me if I'm like 18 or something. Sometimes not as much now because people know me more. But in the beginning, it would be like, so sweetie, what do you do apart from, apart from this? Do you study something? <laughs> uh, no, that's kind of like a full time gig right now. but. I, thank you for making me feel good. You know, so um, I think in the beginning, there was a bit of giving people that trust that there's this person who suddenly puts a huge paper on the wall or sits with that tablet. What is she doing there? But, you know, the more people I think now are aware of that and the, the more they see your work, the more they see that it works, they really appreciate you're there. So, and they're quite excited. They want to be like in breaks. Oh, can you, can you show us? Can you show us? Oh, he looks like him. Oh, look, that's you. That's you there. So, you know, so things like that. So you just get them. It's nice to interact with people, I find as well, not just stand there and be in your world, which is very much often a very comfortable thing that you could do. Just, you know, focus, be quiet and do your thing. But I try also to interact wherever I can so that I feel like uh, I'm part of the team and they feel more comfortable knowing me, who I am. Mm -hmm. And you use both uh, analog and uh, digital graphic recording. Which one do you prefer and why? You know what? It depends on the event, on the purpose of what the client wants to achieve, I guess. There's good things about drawing on paper and there's good things about drawing on digital and bad things. I would say definitely gets me quicker to where I want to be digitally 
So if I'm really at a conference where I need to quickly draw speakers and just tweet it live or something like that, or we have two days to produce a big, rich picture, digital is my friend because you can always edit quickly. Uh, you can blow it up to any size. If there's any mistakes, we can tweak them very nicely, change it up, whatever that is. So it's very flexible. But paper is paper. You can't, you know, uh, I think fight with the fact that if you have something physical and in a big size and people can put it in the office and see it there happening in front of their eyes, I think that is a very, very uh, big value of drawing on a paper or phone board or whatever you're working on. So I always like to ask and see what the client feels would be better for them. If they have no clue, I just choose for myself. And if you choose for yourself, do you use digital? Depends again. So if it's a huge <laughs> conference, if it's a huge conference, and I know that we're sitting in a black room full of, you know, a few thousand people or something like that, yes, I'm going to go for digital. Because again, if we need to interact with social media, that is definite digital for me. But if I'm in a nice room where there's, you know, let's say a few tables, we're sitting all day in a nice session, and people even can add some things to the board, because I often let them do that, if of course client lets me then I think the big piece in front of their eyes is something really nicely closing the thoughts and making them remember. And it's just more exciting when they can see it. So yeah, again, choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the participants being able to contribute to a drawing is uh, something I also use in the trainings that I do. And it's mm -hmm. uh, a very, very powerful way to engage everyone do you find present. Them, so. Do you find them getting scared a bit if, if they want to add something? Oh yeah, I, I almost have to drag them to the board the first time. But then when they, when they, when they've gone once, then all of a sudden the whole group just stands there, takes markers and uh, yeah. I have to make sure that they put them back <laughs> because go. sometimes they take them with them. Mm. So I know that listeners, they, they're into tools, just like I'm, I'm a bit of a gearhead and you probably also can't be, well, dragged away from, uh, from any paper store or any oh God. store where they, where they sell supplies. So what's your favorite digital tool? So what do you use? Right. So digital, I have quite a few, I have to say. So, you know, if you talk to a, a fashion blogger, she would tell you all about her makeup and clothes, I guess. Uh, well, we have few, you know, um, Wacom or Wacom, whatever you call it. I call it Wacom. I'm Polish. Surfaces uh, we use in the studio. So we have the big 27 uh, HD and we have the Cintiq two ones now. So we work with them depending if we need to do something quickly in a studio or just work with a client. I never take the big one because it's crazily big, um, but I always wanted one. So it works amazingly. But for work, quick work, you know, here and there with a client, I would use either uh, Surface Pro 3. So that's the one we've been working on for a while with Microsoft. So they're very nice to kind of just, you know, lend them to us whenever we need to. So that works nicely. And then I, I always, I'm a huge fan of Samsung Note 10.1. And it's quite an old school piece, but you know what? Sometimes those, oh, the older a tablet gets, the better, just like wine. So, so <laughs> I work with different ones depending on what I need. Awesome. Great tip. I think also just try whatever works for you yeah. is probably the best uh, thing. But I know people ask me all the time, what do you use? So that's why I'm asking everybody on the mm -hmm. show, what tools do you use? Because people just, they want to know. Yeah. Now... A perfect day, obviously, is a day spent uh, drawing and meeting people and, and, and having fun. But that's just my perfect day. What is your perfect day? What does it look like? Oh, it definitely involves food. <laughs> uh, well, every day we need food. But, you know, if I can get to go to my favorite restaurant or something like that and meet my friends or my boyfriend or talk to my family, that is always a good day. You know what? I love drawing and that's a fact. I wouldn't be doing what I do. And I'm sure the same for you if you didn't enjoy it. But I find that sometimes it's nice to step away from that and just do something else. So as you presented in the beginning, I'm a huge fan of dance. Yes, I am. And I think that I'm quite good at it, hopefully, because uh, I share quite a few videos now. And people actually think that I changed my work to dancing. So I don't know why. Um, so I go to a lot of classes like and I just dance pop and hip hop and Michael Jackson classes and all that kind of stuff. So it makes me happy. And I think it's very good, especially when we need to be quite a lot of the time sitting in front of a computer, let's be honest, or looking at a tablet or a paper and your back just gets the whole thing. It's really nice to just shake it off your system and move a bit. So, and one more thing, if there's sun in London, I'm loving it. I'm happy. And we all know that London is not always sunny. So when it's uh, cloudy like today, 
it's not as great as sun, but hey, I'll take it. So, and, and the kind of food, if you're a foodie, what, what do you like best? Ooh, I love Spanish tapas. I could eat it every day of my life since I started eating uh, baby, fried baby squids and chorizo and things like that. Like I just could eat it every day, which is a bit sad, but okay. Um, and then I love Japanese, actually. I've discovered few places in London, if you want me to I can share a few names. Uh, so I think these two are pretty my, my favorites there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in your opinion, best tapas place in London and best sushi place in London? Salt Yard for tapas and uh, Chotomat for Japanese food, I would say. Okay. So the graphic recording groupies will be hanging out there. To, to glimpse of you. <laughs> Now, for what in your life do you feel most grateful? Oh, that's such a big question. I'm so grateful, and hopefully it doesn't sound cliche, but I'm so grateful for the family I have, just because they're awesome. My mom means everything to me. She's like the coolest friend and a mom in one. And uh, my brother is everything, just means everything to me and his uh, family. And my boyfriend, of course. Hello, Simon. <laughs> So, but you know what? I just find that these people mostly just give me the energy to do stuff. You know, moving out from your country now almost eight years ago, it's never an easy thing. And, you know, I was thinking that I would go just for one year, do my MA studies, come back, very happily would, you know, uh, live in uh, one of the cities in Poland and just see what happens there. But I fell in love with what was happening here and people that I was meeting. And I just thought like, well, let's give it a go. And suddenly you find yourself so many years after that living in a different country. And as much as you, of course, love it and this, I treat it as my second home. And I definitely want to see my future around London, not maybe in the central London, but, you know, being here. There's always this missing part that you can't ever fill with anything but seeing those people in person and talking to them and seeing how your nephew grows and all that. And whenever I do get to go home, thankfully now more and more often... Uh, cause I kind of, you know, the whole balance of the work and life, I'm trying to figure it out still. Uh, it's just gives me so much energy and I come back with the best ideas, with the best, you know, approach and I can go on and nothing is bad because I have them. So it's just such a good thing to have the people, whoever that is, whether your friend or neighbor or mom or sister, if you have someone like that, like make sure you let them know that they're awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Now. We're almost at the end of the interview. Hey, when? Um, yeah, but before, uh, before I ask the last question, do you have a tip for somebody getting started in this line of work? Mm, I have a lot, but if I had to give one, I always say, please just talk about it with people around you in your network or get out and meet new people and talk about it that, hi guys, I actually have the skill. What do you guys think? This is some of the work I've done. Even if you haven't done any work for any client yet, why don't you just listen to TED Talk or something like that on YouTube and scribble and doodle whatever you hear. Create your own maps, create your own kind of piece of works before you're even hired and just talk to people that this is what I do. What do you think? What do you think that would be of value to someone? And just try to connect with as many people as you can. I mean, I started from just tweeting this random person. I know it sounds weird, but he was the right person for me to just kind of something clicked in the brain. And I decided to kind of give it a go. You never know who you're going to bump into. So I would say, don't put it in a drawer. Talk about it. Even if that starts from a hobby or even if that starts from one piece of work a month and you still do your thing, that's cool. See where it, say, see where it leads you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you feel you need some help there, you can always go to your local doodly-doo. Uh, more and more are getting started uh, around the world. Uh, that's one of the big initiatives you uh, pioneered. How's, and you how's are that going? Running now? one. <laughs> yes, yes. I have a very small one in Dordrecht that sometimes oh, small, we actually small. meet. Um, <laughs> and uh, but it's a lot of fun. It's it's incredible the the the, the warmth that you met, that you see when people get there. And at one of them, I actually had somebody came in, coming in saying, "Well, I really can't draw, and actually, I hate to draw. I'm just here because I know you." Oh, that's so nice. And then she went away, uh, saying. Yeah, now I can draw within two hours, right? So that was really, really awesome. We need to make a blog out of it. That sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> have you, uh, have you, what, what's the best story of one of your doodly doos? Oh, you know what? It's so many. I, I find it a bit like upsetting that I'm not blogging about everything. We need to kind of pick up on that. 
You know what? The best parts of it is if someone met some cool person, whether that's a new friend or someone they can start working with, because that is the point of those meetups. Yes, we draw. That is the mission behind it. That is the delicate, you know, uh, kind of uh, cue behind it to make you do it more. But I'm the most happy person if someone texted me after or something or the same people meet or the same people come where they said they met someone nice or new or whatever. They had a laugh. And that is the biggest thing that makes me like, wow, this is awesome. So um, I really cherish the fact that people just can connect and be very relaxed. Because when we draw and we start having nibbles and drinks and stuff like that, that is the base. But I really enjoy the fact that people start talking and laughing and all that kind of stuff. So the more I hear of these stories, the more it makes me go like, let's do it more. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And talk about connecting. Uh, Where can people go to find out more about you and what you do? Well, I guess the website, so natalkadesign.com or doodlydo.com. And if it's, you can't spell it right, then I guess you can always put it in your links. Uh, my Twitter is natital uh, or natalka underscore design. And basically, you know, if you email or if you call, I would definitely pick it up because it's not like we're a huge agency and needs to go through 40 people until it goes to me. So yeah, so definitely if you write my name as well, you can find some uh, funny videos on YouTube where I dance as a Santa. And it was actually the most viewed v- video when I sent it to my clients. So again, humor helps. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Natalia, for this great hey. conversation. Thank you so much. 